so our theme for today is innovation. So we've got some great speakers lined up for you who will talk about innovation, what that means as a trend, what that means for us, Lumina Learning, what that means for how you can be approaching your practice, your work with your clients in an innovative way. So our first speakers of the day are, we're very proud to call him Dr. Stuart Desson now. <laughs> And Stuart will be accompanied by our very own Julie Ensor. And we also have another special guest, but I will let Stuart introduce him to you in just a moment. So Stuart is going to kick us off for the day. Do you want to come up, Stuart? Thanks so much, guys. <clears throat> um, so that's myself and Julie. And in a moment, I'm going to be inviting uh, Tom Morley up onto the stage as well. Uh, he might have something to do with the stuff that's on your, on your tables. Yeah? So firstly, I just want to say a, a massive thank you for traveling from all the four corners of the world uh, to be here. It's... Um, I feel sort of simultaneously overwhelmed, uh, pretty proud, pretty delighted to see so many brilliant people that are applying Lumina across the world all in one place at the same time. So it's a huge thank you simply for, for being here. And I'm really hopeful we're going to have a really engaging and stimulating few days. Uh, I wanted to say a few words about sort of looking, looking back. Um, who was... Who was there? This was Berlin in 2011. Can you stand up, please, if you were there? <clears throat> so these are, the, these are some of the sort of founders, the original people, the crazies that, that signed up when Lumina was, was vaporware more than software. Uh, and this was the first conference we had. They were trying to look overextended there, and that's why they are <laughs> a strange, uh, strange, uh, strange faces. So uh, thank you, guys. So, and we had, in 2011, around about uh, 400 practitioners. That's where we're at. And then... A couple of years later, who went to Canada, Sparking Hills? Who was here at the top of this mountain? Um, there's a few people standing up again. Chris is there. You were traced by a, a uh, was it a, a wolf or a bear? A wolf. He went for a, he went for a walk over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this was the conference in uh, in Canada. We'd sort of doubled in size by 2013. I think we had eight or nine hundred uh, practitioners uh, globally, uh, and then. If we wind it on, uh, well, actually, yeah, this is, is Mathis. Where's Mathis? He's our resident fire breather. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, way cool. And then we had, uh, a couple of years later, 2015, we went to Bali, and Aileen organized an amazing conference for us in Bali. We'd sort of doubled uh, in size again. We're uh, one and a half heading for 2,000 uh, practitioners in, uh, in Bali. Who is in Bali? Quick stand up if you're in Bali. <laughs> yeah. Okay, very way cool. <laughs> Some really great images, uh, just to remind us of what happened there at that gathering. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful hotel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then now we're here, and we've sort of doubled. We've doubled again. So um, yeah, round of applause for everyone here. <laughs> So we're now at 3,500 practitioners globally. So there's a bit of a pattern here uh, that we keep doubling. So I think every time we have a conference, we double in size. Does that mean if we have another conference next year, we'll be twice as big? <laughs> Probably not. No, it doesn't work like that. But you get the idea. Um, we want to, uh, uh, to keep growing so that we can you know, have more great, awesome people. You'll see the guys in the, in the blue T-shirts um, uh, from, from Camberley. We're on a roll attracting fantastic talent to build uh, more products and to put more good stuff out into, into the world. Um, uh, the target is to double again in the next two to three years. Yeah, so I'd love to be meeting again and saying, hey, we're at 7,000 and, and there's twice as many people in Cambly doing more cool stuff. That's, uh, that's our plan and we're, sort of, we're, on, we're on track for that. 
So the uh, agenda for this session this morning, I'm going to invite Tom on in a minute, Honest, and we're going to talk about making great music uh, together. Um, there is a need for us to collaborate and harmonise over the coming years to double, and this is part of it. I'm then going to say something about Stuart's why, why are we here. So I'm going to be a little bit disclosing personally about what caused me to want to create Lumina and lead that into you know, our values and what we're about. And then Julie is going to join the stage. So Julie Enzo, who leads our product development. I've called it Julie's Crystal Ball. So she's sort of peering into the future and trying to figure out how do we need to innovate? What might we do? What, what are other people doing? Where are we behind? Where do we need to catch up? And so on. So we'll have a look at that. And then that will lead into Julie and myself sharing with you some new stuff. So how are we innovating like today? What have we got that's new for you, you know, in the coming weeks? There's some few goodies that we'd like to, to share with you. So that's the structure of the next hour and, and 15 minutes. Um, now, this is Tom Morley. So Tom is actually a long-term friend of mine. And you can just about see him here. You can just see his hair. Can you make his hair out yeah. on the far side? Um, <coughs> uh, so <laughs> this is Tom. He was the drummer in the punk band Scritti Politi in 1979. And we go back a long way. And, uh, I was in Leeds at Leeds University in 1979. And uh, is this me here? Uh, actually, it's not. I used to have a big perm at that time, so that's not really me. Uh, I was in my room listening to Pink Floyd because I wasn't into punk rock. I wasn't radical enough, you see. So, uh, missed opportunity. But, um, <laughs> uh, but that actually is Tom in, in Leeds back in, uh, back in 1979. So, um, I'm going to invite uh, Tom, Tom onto the stage uh, to... to your thing. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I'm going to get off before he makes me do some <laughs> drumming. <laughs> you see that thing? See where that arrow is pointing? See that circle under the arrow? That's a, a film canister because I couldn't afford any symbols at the time and I thought, well, they look the same. I'll innovate. I know this is all about innovation. And um, so I'd, I thought I was being really clever, right? We're on tour, I'm banging these film cans. And, um, and after about three weeks on tour, a friend of mine came to the gig. And he said, why do you hit those things? And I said, well, it's because they sound really industrial. You know, they're really different. It's an innovation. And he said, but nobody can hear them. And, um, and the sound engineer was so kind of snobby about his job. He didn't bother micing them up. So... That was my first brush with innovation. Um, so you have all sorts of spirit, and sometimes you don't get supported. But the, the thing ab about innovation as a drummer, also, it's weird, because you just play the same beat. You know? Have you ever seen a drum solo? The best drum solo I ever saw was by this jazz drummer at Ronnie Scott's. It came to everyone was doing their piano solo, sax solo, da-da-da. And it came to his solo, and he just played the same beat. Like this. And then occasionally, he just kicked the bass drum a little bit harder. And we all went, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so, um, however, I've seen other drum solos say, look, I'm going to change to 7, 8 now. Now I'm going to 3, 4. Now. And everyone goes, yeah, we all know you're clever. But so what? We can't dance to it. So the whole thing um, about my approach to innovation is it's sometimes better to do something you're good at, but just do it really well, because um, you don't have to uh, invent the wheel, you know, reinvent the wheel. So it's better to do it standing up, I have to say. So could I ask you to stand up? And uh, I put a suit on just to make you feel comfortable, so you didn't think, <laughs> didn't think Stuart would just picked me up from the station selling the big issue. So, uh, but you can take your jacket off now if you want, because we're going to get a little bit physical. So could I ask you to shake hands? And do you, do you know what? When, when it said making lovely music together or making great music together, did some of you just think, oh, no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's do it call and response. Yes. 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 No. No. Yes. 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 Yes, it's all right. It's all right. Um, so, could you put your right arm out in front of you, please? It's going to be a full body thing, this. So we're going up to the shoulder. Down the arm. 
Yeah, now you could give me a round of applause if you want, and I'll applaud you. <laughs> up the other arm, up to that shoulder, down on the inside. Some of you need to start breathing again, which would be good. Um, down the outside of your legs, so as low as you can go. So give the people behind you a real treat. <laughs> up, up on the inside. And then just stretch up at you. And then just crunch your shoulders up as if you're a bit stressed. Let them go. One more time. Let them go with a sigh. Okay, one more time. It's the only bit of acting I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to pretend you've lived quite a hard, almost heroic life. And you've never been properly recognized for all the great things you've done that you just did, you know, silently in the background, holding everything together. If you were to crunch your shoulders up and let that sigh go, what would it sound like? <sighs> yeah, that's very, you acted that very well. <laughs> so we're going to see, uh, I said it was about rhythm. I wonder, just while I'm strapping my drum on, would you just put your left foot forward, please, and face me? If you're wearing a tie, you can tie it around your head at this point. I'm not, I'm not going to do it because I haven't got time. <laughs> oh, dear. Oops. Uh, okay. All right. Just while I'm strapping the drum up, would you shake hands with two people and say, good luck? Okay, so I've, done, I've worked all around the world. I've worked in Moscow, LA, Istanbul, France. I've done this work with French bankers. Every group, however disparate they are, whether they've come from all over the place, they have a rhythm. So I'm just going to see what your rhythm is. Yeah, let me show you what your rhythm is. <laughs> however, I, I tell a lie because I did see some people, immediately some people start going like that. So, uh, I'll just tell you now, Stuart's asked me to come as, as the vibe navigator for this conference. So, this isn't a kind of icebreaker, then it's back to PowerPoint. You will, <laughs> you will see me getting on and off stage occasionally going, come on, let's lift it up. Or let's take it down sometimes, if you get too excited. <laughs> How are you feeling? You're feeling too excited. <laughs> I, know, I know, it's a lot. <laughs> All right, we'll take it up. So, the reason you put your left foot forward is we're just going to get you a rhythm immediately. So we're going forward, back, da da da, forward. Yeah, look at that. Just look around. Okay, keep moving, keep moving. I'm just going to demonstrate. There's two ways of doing this. One is the city broker way, which is this. <laughs> Who booked this guy? <laughs> and the other way is like this. Oh, yeah, who booked this guy? <laughs> I'd recommend the second way because I'm not going to go away. I'm going to be here for two. <laughs> you can't do that for three days. You're, uh... <laughs> Yeah, good. So, now, I want you to pretend. I've got an agent behind the screen. He's watching you, right? He's going to pick one of you. Four. Ten years of Lumina training for free. <laughs> but he's only, he can only pick one of you, so you've really got to stand out. Actually, there's two. I've got a woman over here. She's also, she's checking out the men. <laughs> Good. So now we're going to multitask. This is not an innovation. It's a West African, no, a South African field song sung between the fields. So I'm going to be in one field. You're going to be in another. If you see anyone not moving, just say to them, can I help you? <laughs> so we're going to multitask. I'm going to call. You're going to call back to me. Oh, Leo. 
Yeah, something they tell you at um, music school. If you open your mouth when you sing, you get more volume. <laughs> so I've just saved you nine grand there. Ole -o! Ole -o! Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Ole -o! Ole -o! Ole -o! Ole -o! Ole -o! Ole -o! la la. Ole -o! Ole -o! Ole -o! Ole -o! Ole -o! la la. Good. Now keep moving. Keep that groove. You can be a bit freestyle. Do you know, I was born in Brighton, about a mile from here, in the maternity hospital. I've got a lot of friends here, musicians. Eight of them, I said, I've got a gig at the Grand. I need you on stage with me at nine o'clock. They said, great, I'll be there. One minute to nine, I phoned them out. I said, where are you? They said, we'll be there at nine o'clock tonight. So consequently, there are eight drums here for eight people. Now, you may lean towards being introspective. You may lean towards being extrovert. Is anyone leaning towards the stage right now? <laughs> run on up, run on up. I'd, I wish we could have drums for everybody, but we've just got these eight. Here comes one. Let's give her a round of applause. Yeah, just sit down, anyone. Yeah, and could you just throw my coat on the floor there? Yeah, woo-hoo! Yeah. Okay, good. Just make as much noise as you can. And everybody, let's scream! Whoa! Uh, huh. Great. We have to get that scream over first, otherwise it's just waiting to come out the whole session. See this guy? He's holding his drum perfectly because you need to tip it a little. You can all do that. Oh, you're wearing trousers. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, well, your, your, your modesty is safe with us. Okay, so, now, if you're wearing rings, uh, you may want to take them off. I know it's a three-day conference, so some of you have probably already taken your wedding rings off. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's such an attractive crowd. Why, why wouldn't you? Um, so, uh, we're just going to help. You see these tubes on the table. Would you pick one up, people out there? We're all going to play this beat just together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, now we're going to get the hardest bit over first, drummers. I just, with the other hand, I want you to wave at the audience. <laughs> and then swap hands. It's hard, yeah. It's not going to get any harder than this. And then two hands. And cut. Good. So I'm going to invite Amelia up. Amelia's over there. Right. Now, I see, do you know what I see? I see this amazing stuff from the stage. And when I see the photographs back, all I see is the backs of people's heads. So it's very often photographers, they, they kind of think they're invisible in the room. But are they invisible? No. Are they invisible? No. Can you say hello to Amelia? Hello. <laughs> There's other people around, but I've just picked on her because uh, she was there. <laughs> you do, don't you? So, uh, Amelia, d just dart around. Get the best smiles you can. And if you see the camera pointing at you, do smile. Especially drummers, because uh, I see this amazing energy on stage with people drumming. And when, when we see the photos back, they're like this. <laughs> so, um, so we want people to come next year, right? <laughs> so, 
Not that I'll be another surprise next year. I expect you'll all go paintballing in the woods. <laughs> Would you like to drum next year if I brought drums for everybody? Yeah. yeah. All right. So we will just quickly get something going. Big red people. Would you just... Okay, so drummers, would you just hold the pulse for us like that? And keep breathing. Smile, smile, just as if... And I want, out there, I want you to pretend you're interested in what they're doing. So, big, just the big reds. You're going like this. Just the big reds. Greens, you are going. Where's the greens? Here we go. With me, with me. Then nothing, nothing. Great. Yellows, you're going to answer the green. Yeah. Purples, I'd like you to just go. You're going to go. Down. Okay. Last but not least, little reds. Is that right? Here we go. La, 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 la. Da, 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 da. Yeah, good. Now, once again, remember, we've got two agents watching. So, if you do your job like this, you're not going to get spotted. But you can innovate with very simple things. You could go. So, have a think. In your groups, look around at the other people and see what you could do. A leader may emerge with a move. Do. Have a look. There's someone there who's leading in the greens. Watch what she's doing. Yeah, so grab the space. Keep going, we've got two minutes left. I'm gonna set the drummers free. If you wanna get around, be as big as you can. Okay, drummers. You can now play whatever you want. Don't speed up. Just hold that beat. Amelia, could you get a shot down the line? Look at the camera. Let's smile that way. Okay, boom whacker people, keep going. I'm gonna cut the drums, but you keep going. Drummers, come. Keep going. Okay, we're going to speed up a little bit in our last two days together. Here we go. So, dum, 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 da, 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 I'm going to play something. I want you to play it back to me. Yeah.
Okay, now just play whatever you want. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, boom whacker people. Can you put your left foot forward, please? And we're gonna go. Forward, back. Yeah! Be free! Okay, we have 10 seconds to rumble! Here we go! Listen to me here! Thank you very much. <laughs> now, as you sit down and people on stage, uh, would you say to at least three people, I knew you were very smart, but I didn't know you were also a professional musician. <laughs> well done, I knew you were very smart. I didn't know you were a professional musician. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's have a huge, a huge thank you for Tom, Vive Master. Excuse me. So, we will be hearing uh, a bit more from Tom as the Vive Master whenever he senses something might be needed energetically in the room. There'll be some more. And did you see uh, five to six o'clock tonight? There's something uh, splash on the beach. A little bit of Tom's involvement there. We'll say more on that, uh, more on that later. So, um, I wanted to share a, a few things that are sort of personal to me in terms of why I came to create um, Lumina Learning and how some of my ideas sort of manifested in, uh, in what we do. And this is a, a process I actually did with um, Lance Secretar on a retreat a number of years ago. It's called the Why Be Do. And I'm just going to share with you some of the results from it, because the why is sort of what fuels some of the purposes um, that, that um, are sort of evident in our material. So while we're here, um, how will I be? What will I stand for? What will I do? Now, this is a bit personal, so I'm going to start out just sharing some personal stuff. It's not necessarily full on Lumina, it's me, but then you'll see how it starts to impact what we're doing at Lumina. And I'm going to go back in time a bit, yeah? and this is conclusive <laughs> proof that, that like, Anything to do with self-awareness and, and who we are is bad for your hair, yeah? Because <laughs> I used to have a lot more hair. And our reasons why change. So if you met me in 1985, uh, I'm embarrassed to say I wasn't saying I want to be more self-aware and help people explore and grow. I didn't. Uh, I did something called operational research, which is like data science and uh, even a bit of artificial intelligence. And I remember saying on numerous occasions, when people said, what's your raison d'etre, I said, I apply the method of science to organizational problems. I even said it at dinner parties. Didn't work so well, but that is actually what I used to say. Um, I evolved it a little bit. So by the time I got to 1990, it was about influencing the decisions that matter with data science and analysis and so on. Those were the sorts of things we were saying. And that really motivated me to bring um, sort of some scientific rigor to organizations. Those are both sort of externally orientated. They came from the people around me that I was engaged with. And something happened in the 90s, and I started when I looked at my values and purposes to say things like, I want to help myself and others learn and grow. That came through some experiences at, at BA, through being coached and so on. And um, 
that had uh, an impact that caused me to want to change direction and do what I'm doing now. And this quote from Jung sort of appeals, we can't live the afternoon of life according to the program of life's morning. What was great in the morning will be <coughs> little at evening. So I wanted to do something completely new and, and change. And so if you'd met me, I did like a master's in humanistic psychology. If anyone knew me in 2005, I was saying, I want to bring humanistic psychology to the workplace. And everyone said, what's humanistic psychology? It meant a lot to me, but not everyone knew. By the time I got to 2010 setting up Lumina, these were the uh, crazy sort of early people that got in to help me build Lumina going back to 2010. And I was trying to reintegrate that scientific bit of me with that humanistic bit. And I was saying things like, I want a statistically valid psychometric, but I want to engage humanistic consultants that don't like reductionist stuff, don't like labeling. And that was how I was sort of framing it. And that's where the, you know, the both ends of the splashes, the both ends you know, came in. It's not, a, it's not either or. Um, and then just a few years ago, uh, probably about three years ago, on the, on, the, on the workshop, the retreat with Lance, I came up with to help create a more connected and compassionate world. And that speaks to, speaks to me as something that's worthwhile doing, and it's one of my reasons why for, for, um, for Lumina. Um, so the why be do idea is, if that's my reason why, how do I want to be? And this is a little bit like a values exercise, and the, things, the words that spoke to me and how I want to be at Lumina and here is to be, be trusting, um, <coughs> I also want to be kind and also inspiring. Now, I could have chosen other words, but those are the ones that, that speak to me most. And there's a risk in saying it that I don't live up to it, or it might not be your experience, but that's what I want to do. And finally, what do I personally want to do? Well, um, <clears throat> I do want to collaborate globally. We're doing that pretty well here, actually, so we're, we're on purpose on that. This is an amazing collaboration of people over the world. And I think there's an element of like-mindedness here. We all have, we're all on our own different purposes, uh, but there is a, a sense of, of community. And pretty much everyone here wants to help organizations in the world, and uh, that's certainly what I want to do. And for me, inclusivity and democracy, they're words that speak to me. And by democracy, I mean a, you know, a consensus, a listening, engaging, uh, and being open to a process where we work, work together, that sort of sort of my take on it. So this is quite personal. Um, I'm not suggesting it's for everyone else, but it is for me, and it's partly, partly um, why, why Lumina does what it does. Now, uh, if I go now into Lumina's values, I wanted to say a few words about Lumina's values, which some of you may or may not be fully aware of, and we aspire to them. I'm not saying we're perfect. These were created uh, back in 2010, partly from my own work and partly from engaging with the partners and alliances that were on board at that time. So all the people that stood up at the beginning that were, that were at the Berlin conference, they all sort of input. And we came up with, with four, and I think they stand pretty well, pretty well today. So the first one is about being customer-centric. So we want, uh, we want Lumina to be focused on the ultimate customer that has the experience and the clients that, that pay the money, uh, but actually, in a sense, all of you in this room are, are, are customers as well of uh, myself and my team in Camberley. Um, we also want to innovate. So a second value is around innovation. And obviously, that's innovation in our products. But it's also innovation in terms of how we work together. We want to work together creatively and innovatively. So we're setting our stall out to say, you know, we aspire to do that. I'm hoping we're going to innovate these few days here together. And then this third one's an interesting one, because I would like <coughs> everybody that we work with, the team in Camberley, the partners, everyone around the world, practitioners and the customers, to be engaged in our own personal development, um, acknowledging that we're, we're all work in progress. <coughs> that a, is a sort of a personal value of mine I'm trying to bring to everybody um, else. And if I meet uh, potential partners around the world, and a sense they're not interested in their personal development, that would be a reason for not wanting to work with them, because they wouldn't be aligned. And finally, on purpose, which means we love what we do, and we're, we're energized by our work. Yeah? So that's what we've set out to do um, in, terms of, in terms of values. Um, 
In terms of the bigger picture, does anybody recognize this, um, this term? Transforming organizations by transforming people. So this was actually created in 2013. So to try and summarize what Lumen is about in, in just one sentence, uh, a group of us got together after the, the conference in Canada at Sparking Hills, and we said we want to transform people. And that will help transform organizations. And that seems to make sense to us. I've called it the big picture version of what we do because it's quite conceptual. I know lots of people here relate to it and think that's great. Who thinks it's great? Yeah, you think it's great. And some people are left scratching their head. I've noticed if I say at a dinner party, it doesn't work so well. Yeah? Um, <laughs> if I'm down the pub with some old school friends and they say, what do you do? That's not, not so good. Um, so we wanted to go for a down-to-earth version. And this is the sort of down-to-earth version that emerged. Someone says, what do you do? Well, it's business psychology meeting technology. You sort of measure who you are, and we put it in an app. And then people can sort of understand it if they're sort of grounded and, um, in, the, in the real world, which is another way of framing it. Who likes that one? Yeah, I quite like that one. Um, and then we've been doing some business planning. So in the last few years, I've been engaging with all the uh, partners and strategic alliances in the room, with, with Radhika and, and Laura and the team, and Suzanne, to say, what's in our business plan? And the first thing is, well, can we be clear from a business plan point of view? Let's be outcome-focused. What's the purpose from this perspective? And the outcome-focused version is to be the recognized leader. So we are a bit competitive, right? We do want to be, we do want to be the best innovating. We might not be the biggest, but we definitely want to be the recognized leader and the best for innovation. And it's personalized. Everything we do speaks to the individual. And it's selection and it's development. We thought those were two nice words that describe um, the, the market and what we do. Um, and it's solutions. So it's not just a product. It's not just technology. It's all the brilliance in this room that combines with the products to create solutions. So who likes this one? Yeah. Um, so that's the more outcome-focused version. And the, the people-focused version, well, actually, I'm going to go back to to help create a more connected and compassionate world. Um, I'm advocating that. Uh, who, who's willing to sign up to that? Who thinks that's a, that's a good one? Yeah, I'll go with that. That's two-thirds. That's good enough for me. <laughs> um, so these are some of the, the purposes that I wanted just to, to share with you so you're aware of where we're at and what we're shooting for. And someone said to me, you've got to tell people what your strategy is at Brighton. I said, OK, I will, but I'm going to do it on one slide, yeah? uh, just to keep it nice and simple. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to ask, Does any, can anyone guess what our strategy is? If that's our purpose, you've got the values. Nikita? Take over the world. Take over the world. That's not, not part of it, but we... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll, I'll add that, add another bullet point in the break. Well, uh, strategy in a slide, the first is we want to build integrated products. We want to be a one-stop shop for organizational development consultants, humanistic consultants, anyone that's more sophisticated and could be doing uh, selection, development, team building, culture change, you name it. We want to be a one-stop shop and our products need to be joined up. Hence the use of the, the big five, hence the use of the color lens. Everything needs to be designed to work together. That's part of our, our strategy. And we want to put it inside a platform, because where the market's going, you know, <coughs> companies are building platforms, ecosystems, and you sort of live and work within them. Uh, this wasn't happening 20 years ago. 20 years ago with psychometrics, you did it, and then you were advised to destroy the data and burn it all six weeks later, and just that was it, just leave them with it. But now we want a system that engages people on, a, on an ongoing basis. So we're calling that a platform. And we want to be able to customize it. So a little bit later, uh, Julie's going to join me on the stage, and she's going to share some of the customizing functionality we're building so that you guys can take the product, adjust the competencies, the framework, whatever it is, and create a really, really cool, innovative solution. So the innovative solutions come from that blend of inspiring people with really cool products. And we want to do this globally. I think we're on track. This is genuinely a truly, truly global room. Of, of brilliant people. And the final bit of our strategy, I've called it the win, 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 win. So what does that mean? It means actually part of our growth and success is because we've got a, a business model that works for our ultimate customers, the organizations that use it and the people that experience it. 
Um, it works for the consultants and practitioners globally. It also works for our communities of practice, our, our partners, our alliances that, that, that attract people together. And many of you are here in, in, in communities around different tables. And it also works for myself and the team in Camberley who are creating the IP and so on. Actually, that's no mean feat, thinking all that through and keeping it, making sure the model's balanced and that we work collaboratively. Um, and that is part of our strategy. And you can see some of our competitors, they don't, they don't do that as well. And then it, can, it won't grow if you don't do it so well. So what do you reckon? That's the strategy on a slide. Yeah. How many people already knew that? Who knew it already? And who's just learned something a bit? Who's embarrassed to put the hand up? Okay, okay. Just checking. <laughs> hey, Tom. Tom. Now, as, <laughs> as, uh, as Vibe Navigator, mm -hmm. let me just show you what happened. Big picture, strategy, all different colours. What do you think of that there, everyone? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's what we want, isn't it? Because, do you notice, everyone just said, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they didn't even say it as loud as that. <laughs> <laughs> just so, said it inside the head. So, so help me, Vibe so, Master, so help I'm me. Not, I'm not going to do this. I want you to say it again, right? Okay. And whoever makes the most noise, I want you to give them these two rings. <laughs> 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 no, I don't really yeah. <laughs> so, now, once again, I'm going to jump off stage. And you want me, you want me to say, this is I, the strategy? This is the strategy, and then I'll, we're on the side. What do you think? I want you to go, what do you think? Okay, right. try it like that. Okay, right it's so, okay. So here, here is the strategy. We're going to build integrated products, one-stop shop. We're also going to build it in a platform. Uh, and when we've done that, we're going to let you customise it. So it's going to be way cool with your own frameworks. We're going to do it across the world, and it's a win-win-win-win. Yeah. What do you think? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Vibe Master. Thank you, Vibe Master. <laughs> okay, I'll try doing the same thing for the next slide, Tom. So, stand back. <laughs> what are we doing in the, in the next year in terms of our objectives? Uh, well, we want to evolve our culture. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> We've been pretty big on inspiration driven at the start. We're building more discipline driven. Many of the people in the blue shirts are a bit higher on discipline driven than the people that were around a decade ago. Uh, do you like <laughs> Round of applause for the people in the blue shirts. <laughs> we need to keep developing the platform to make it world beating. We need to move more fully into selection. Many of us have been working in selection for years. I can see faces around the room that have done great customizations, but we want to disrupt the market. We want to innovate in that space. And we want some stunning marketing. We've been working on this for a year, and it's, 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 it's coming. We've got some cool stuff. And the videoing that we're doing these few days and the photography, that's all going, by the way, into our cool marketing going forward. So you could well be featuring. Is that cool? Yeah. And we need to collaborate. We need a bit more process, and we need to do things more globally. So we have been in our communities quite independent. We're going to work out, and we've got Gavin Biggs here. Where's Gavin? Gavin Biggs, please stand up, Gavin. He's helping us go global. <laughs> Okay, so this, this was the, the crazy team in 2009, inspired by things like drinking Red Bull, working all night. Uh, these are some of the coders and so on. And in fact, we have Chris in the room who was there at the beginning creating the database. Chris, stand up. Yeah. Could Vibe Master? Sussex, of course, where I grew up, they play a lot of cricket, right? And how do you think they'll put cricket? Oh, jolly good. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Chris, jolly good for giving us all something to sell and making us very, very rich. So, um, uh, I know that isn't exactly what he's done, but he has, he has helped. He certainly. Right, so, what do we think? Chris, stand up! Yeah! <laughs> within these three days that we're together of if there is an opportunity for applause, I mean, it does build energy in you. So it's a way of energising yourself and, and you, 
you know, really, I mean, he might, he might not even be a very nice guy, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> we're taking guys ourselves at his expense. You know, that, that's what I'm saying. So, is there any, anyone else you've got to talk uh, there will be, but uh, do you know what? I'm getting the hang of this now, so I, oh. might, I might be calling you back, Vibe Master. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So, look, take this. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, 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 oh, my God. It'll this help. Is, will it really help? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and next time, next time, why don't you say, why don't we innovate with the applause and just bang on the table like we're all at public school and someone's just dropped a tray of pee? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Okay, I'll give it, I'll give it yeah, a go. Yeah, give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what have I unleashed? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so this is the, the team in 2009. Tell me if you can see anything that they have in common in terms of their splashes. There's something that's high, and there's something that uh, tends to be low. Yeah? <laughs> this is a photo outside my house. It started in my kitchen, and they used to come around and work. Yeah, pretty high on inspiration-driven, pretty low on uh, discipline-driven. We realised that because we, you know, we use our own framework. We, we need more discipline. So we brought in some new people. Oh, dear. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, they were all brilliant. You know, graphics. Uh, it was Shaz that painted the mandala and so on. Tim came up with the idea of the word cloud. All cool, but a um, little bit low on discipline-driven. So we tried harder with our own framework. And uh, then we did indeed get Radhika. Yay! <laughs> And Julie, and you can bang the table. <laughs> and James, where's James? Where's James? <laughs> and Joe, where's Joe? Where's Joe hiding, Joe? <laughs> and we've been working. We've been working at bringing in more, um, more discipline-driven ever since. I'm going to show you something that's just uh, just gone live. If I can get it to work, come and work. Here we go. Wait for it. Might need my glasses. <laughs> Does it go with the hat? Let's have a look. Can we magically switch it? Let me have a look. Uh, let's try. We'll go for this one. So here is the uh, the way cool new Lumina team, and what I'm going to show you here is what the team looked like with our new Lumina team system back in 2011. Yeah. So this has literally gone live last week. It's all, all there for you. And this is sort of overall, you can see a little bit on the right-hand side. We did have a bit of James was holding the fort at the bottom there with the discipline driven. Um, we could have a look at the underlying, and it animates. We could go to the, uh, we'll have a look at the everyday. And what happened under pressure, because I can tell you we did have a bit of pressure, and it looked a bit like, it looked a bit like that. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, Let's go back, and we'll just do a quick take on, on where we're at today. So if I go to Camberley 2018, and we have a quick look. Do you think we've changed it a bit? <laughs> what do you reckon? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to have a look at what happens under pressure, because it seems that we quite often are. So uh, this is what happens under pressure. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> I'm still up at the top, coming up with good ideas at the last minute, but everyone else is going uh, crazy. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so have a play with that um, after today, because it's there live in the system for you now. Um, and if we could flip it back to the flip it back to the PowerPoint. And okay, so what I want to do now, I want to invite Julie um, Enzer onto the stage. I've called this Julie's Crystal Ball. Julie. Uh, uh, is absolutely brilliant. She's thoughtful, she reflects, she researches, but most of all, she's collaborative, easy to work with, and we sort of click in terms of our ideas. So, Julie, please come on the stage. Make some noise to Julie. <laughs> and we're going to do a bit, of a, a bit of a double act on some of this, so, um, and I'm going to invite Julie to share some of her, her thoughts. So, this is um, Arthur Clarke, and he... <coughs> His famous quote is that uh, advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And actually, what we're doing with Spark on the app, if you told me 25 years ago, like we'd measure your personality, you could compare it to someone else, and it all runs by magic on this thing on your phone, I would have been sort of, it would have seemed like magic to me just 25 years ago. Uh, that's pretty cool. And Arthur Clarke, by the way, in 1974, I watched a video of him. He predicted the internet in 1974, which is pretty 
pretty amazing. He said, in people's houses, there'll be consoles. You'll talk to them. It'll do your bank statements, your theater reservations, Alexa. everything. Hmm? It's Alexa. It's Alexa. He was basically predicting Alexa in 1974, which is, which is no, no mean feat. And, and Julie's been trying to do a bit of, a, <laughs> bit of an Arthur C. Clarke in the world of psychometrics. With my yeah. very low big picture thinking, so yeah. that's interesting. <laughs> Um, this is uh, Professor Stephen Benton, um, and we, in fact, it's a bit of a, Lumina is a bit of a Benton family affair. We have a number of Bentons in the room, which I'll, I'll say more on in a minute. And, and Steve has done a number of things. Firstly, he's written a chapter in this book uh, on Lumina around team development. And secondly, for those of you that don't know, he was uh, my supervisor for my PhD. In fact, he was, he was more than that, really. He encouraged me to do it in the, in the first place, and he helped me navigate some pretty difficult uh, corridors around the university uh, to get it. And we've also got in the room um, his, his brilliant wife, um, Aileen, who was also very nurturing around the PhD and runs stuff in Indonesia. And, of course, we've got Chris. I'm going to ask both Chris and Aileen to stand up. And I want us to make some noise for Chris, Aileen, and Professor Benton. Yeah. <laughs> so this, this book, uh, which we're really proud to have a, a chapter in, has also got a chapter in um, from this gentleman here. Who, who would this be, Julie? Well, I don't know. Does anyone, in, does anyone in the room know who this person is? Anyone recognise his face? Nope. I know two people that know who he is. They're just being very quiet and pretending they don't yeah. know. Um, yeah, so this is actually Robert, Ma Robert McHenry, uh, founder of OPP, who uh, famously brought Myers-Briggs to the UK um, and the world and the Middle East. Um, so he has a chapter in the book called The Future of Psychometric Testing, and in it he makes a lot of uh, key predictions about where the field of psychometrics is going. So we thought we'd uh, take you through the predictions and see maybe whether you agree, disagree, and have some reflections on those. So, what's the first prediction? Smartphones will replace computers for employee assessment. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty behind this one. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's an easier prediction because it's already happening. So it's always good when your predictions are already happening. Yeah. They're more likely to be accurate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one wasn't too much of a high risk. One yeah. Um, yeah, if you go on any, any website of most of our competitors now, you'll see more and more in their branding, their marketing, they really emphasizing the fact that their questionnaires are mobile friendly. Um, and you'll see lots of pictures of tablets and mobile phones. Um, and it's Julie, something... do, we, do we have any mobile friendly stuff? Um, well, we do. Coming soon, very soon. <laughs> yeah. um, so this is a, a screenshot of our new questionnaire system. And I'm just going to jump to a, a quick demo of it as well. I know, fancy stuff. Okay. So, this is our new questionnaire system, uh, built to be uh, mobile friendly. So, key changes are we're going for a one question per page, keeping it really nice and clean and simple. Um, and we've got a really cool double tap functionality, so you can easily. Oh, here we go. Your sale ends <laughs> soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what happens, so I can double tick here and it's going to take me to the next question. So really, really simple, we've gotten rid of all the other additional stuff so you can just focus completely on the questions. So really nice, uh, easy to, to, to zoom through the questionnaire. So yeah, coming soon, so maybe we can get a, a drum roll on well, that Julie, one. Julie, what, what about Lumina Leader? Can we see Lumina Leader? How we can see work? Lumina Leader as well. And there's other cool features as well um, that we've got in there. So if you're taking too long to answer the questionnaire, for example, it gives you a little prompt telling you to hurry up. Um, and also to slow down if you're going too fast. Um, also for Lumina Leader, um, other, other nice features are things like if you are doing the questionnaire and you're giving feedback to somebody and you haven't actually written any quality feedback, it will give you a little prompt um, to make sure you don't miss out on that. Um, but here we can see, again, nice double tap feature, you can also click the area to develop and write your comments as well. So just a really nice simple way to, to make the questionnaire clean, clean and cool and simple and slick. So there's a, a couple of oh. people I want to acknowledge for this. Yes. So going back a few years, we have got 
James Akers, who worked um, with, uh, with, with Magic, and more recently, the person that's been building this is Jan Zhu. So could I ask James Akers and Jan Zhu, come forward, wave your hands so we can see you, and make some noise, bang the table. Cool. So yeah, we're on that one. <laughs> Tick. Um, so what's next then? So prediction number two. So uh, what Robert believes is that high quality psychometric testing services will be sold direct to customers, so business to consumer. Um, so what are your thoughts on this one? Well, it is sort of happening in the market. You can see on Facebook and so on, you're, we're invited and enrolled to, do, um, to engage in other things and buy things directly. And there are some things that we're doing here. Um, so that's partly the idea of having a, a Lumina platform where people can go. And we want to put things in the platform, so it's not just you do Spark and you're done. We're planning on putting some e-learning in there, giving people a reason to go back to log in at, at their choice as individuals uh, to engage with the resources that are there. And uh, one thing that we're working on right now, and this is working on, work, being worked on by Madvi. Where's Madvi? Make some noise for Madvi. Where's Madvi? Here she is. <laughs> So if someone's worked on Spark and they want to share it with their friends or family on a non-commercial basis, we're going to make that available as a Lumina gift and, and do the admin on that in a sort of slick way. Yeah? So I think the market is, is going in that direction. Thank you, Gavin. You like it. <laughs> <coughs> OK, so this one is also quite interesting. So one of the other big predictions is the impact that neuroscience will have on uh, psychometric testing or basically a, a new way to look at people's personalities. Um, interestingly, it's actually already happening. So you can see some um, pictures of the brain here. This is from some research where they've actually mapped uh, the big five onto different functions of the brain. So for example, conscientiousness being linked to activity in the prefrontal cortex. And if you're interested in learning a bit more about this, there's a nice blog on it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's very, very interesting. Um, so what he says is that these will tell you which are the most interesting um, individual differences to look at and, and therefore where to focus on. So I'm not sure what he thinks. Maybe we'll be going in and putting some... Um... In fact, this is what this hat is. <laughs> yeah, it's now exactly. reading my personality. But... <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it, is, it is happening um, and interesting to see maybe how applications sort of emerge from that. Um, just to say on, on the neuroscience bit as well, so um, there's a theory in uh, personality called alpha and beta, which considers, and I know Nikita's a big fan, um, which considers that actually there's two higher order factors of personality um, sort of over and above the big five. So if you simplify the big five and actually factor analyze the data, you get two factors of personality emerging. Um, and these are called um, plasticity and stability. Um, so plasticity is on the right, um, and actually what it links very nicely to is the right half side of the mandala. So you'll see that those aspects all kind of correlate together. Um, and what they've found in the neuroscience is that that is actually a link to a, a reward-seeking reward behavior, which is um, governed by the uh, dopamine, dopamine neurotransmitter, neurotransmitter. Of course, it's very complex, but simplified, that's what it means. And then on the left-hand side uh, is actually the stability one. And as you can see, again, all these uh, aspects correlate closely together. However, they don't tend to correlate that much across the board, so there's almost like an invisible fold in the mandala, which means that there's sort of this differentiation between these two, two, two sides. That's um, sort of symbolised by the, the correlations right. here are sort of higher, and then at the seam, it's 0.14 at the top, 0.11. Yeah. Simplifying um, the two, two factors. And this one is uh, linked to serotonin, and it's more about uh, withdrawal, um, so moving away from reward or minimising risks. And you can kind of see that, how that might play out in being quite discipline driven, for example, you know, making sure you want to meet your deadlines by being careful and planning and being very diligent. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting to see how some of the, the big theories are actually being represented in our own data. 
Okay, prediction number four. So the digital movement. So the passive collection of data to measure your personality. So this could be through, through uh, your tweets, your likes on Facebook. This is a pretty big movement. Um, probably most of you know, will have heard of it through uh, things like Cambridge Analytica and, and the crazy Facebook scandal that has emerged. Um, which is really changing uh, how we uh, actually re uh, view the, the benefits of this, and, and it's, it's kind of opened up a bit of a can of worms. Um, but his view is that actually using this big data, um, you'll actually be able to bypass ever having to fill in a psychometric for a job, for example, which I think is, is, is quite a, a big statement. I would say that's probably not going to happen. Um, I think the way it's gone with GDPR, Cambridge yeah. Analytica, data privacy, uh, it's unlikely to be okay that you turn up at, at a job interview and they've analysed all yeah. your social media and that's the basis of it. Um, <clears throat> there's an interesting divide here between sort of mathematicians and AI people and, and psychologists. In fact, there's a bit of a war going on between them and the war goes a bit like this. The, the, uh, the AI people, the mathematicians, they love black boxes. They're going to look at your social media, gather all your data, figure it all out and ha we know and figure it but it's a black box and they don't often know what's going on. And then <clears throat> the psychologists are striving for a transparent box where we know what's going on so it's fair, um, so there's no adverse impact, and it's all done ethically and so on. And they're completely different planets, really. And um, <clears throat> we've sort of got a, a foot in, in both camps and we're trying to figure out the, the, best, way, the best way to do it. If we, if we err one way, it's more towards the, 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 the transparent box so we know exactly what we're doing. So I'm yeah. sort of sceptical as to where this will go in, in our line of work, yeah? But also yeah. open, we are researching it as well, so we're... We don't want to totally close the door on it. No, no, we, yeah. we, we, we want to figure it, but there's a lot of work to do to figure it, yeah? I think it's interesting to know that uh, this prediction came in 2017 when he released the book. I'd be interested to see maybe post-Cambridge Analytica, post-Facebook scandal, whether things might have changed a bit on this prediction. Uh, as we can see, this is the, uh, <laughs> the full light on it. This is when GDPR goes wrong. Yep. Yeah. So is... there is Alexander Nix, CEO of Cambridge Analytica, being escorted <laughs> off the premises. Um, and yeah, so not a good day for him. So we want to avoid that, obviously. Okay, last big prediction is the basis for employee development will be derived from the data yielded by wearable devices. So moving away from taking a psychometric test, instead maybe putting on a heart monitor um, or some sort of smartphone app, um, and that will basically be how we do um, coaching and developing in the future. What do you think? Well, it's sort of already happening. I read a study the other day that someone was designing a set of offices and they tagged everybody, gathered data on their movements, their heartbeat and so on, and from that found out that certain designs were bad for collaboration, created anxiety, and other ones were better. So, like, this is definitely happening. Uh, on the other hand, I'm yet to figure out how you can do that and figure out your splash and who you really are, because that requires something... Um, up here, yeah. uh, and unless they invent, really do invent a device that can read your brain, which seems a bit unlikely to me in the, the next couple of decades, I don't think we're going to be deriving your, your splash from this sort of thing. But it's definitely where the market's, um, the market's going. Yeah, more focus on biological factors, so maybe going for an interview, for example, and they want to test your resilience, and um, maybe they'll strap on a, a heart monitor to really understand how your heart's beating yeah. under that pressure. Who knows, that could be the So future. I did do some field experiments here to see if it works. This yeah. is me at a psychology <laughs> conference, and they did wire me up to see how I responded to, uh, I think that's a lie detector and so on, but um, yeah. <clears throat> um, it was a bit of fun, but I'm not convinced it's uh, going to be so, so useful for us. Yeah. Okay, so that was a bit of a look into the future, but what's happening right now? So obviously the theme of today's talk is to stay ahead of the game. So we want to be innovators at Lumino, we want to disrupt the market. Um, but how is the landscape actually changing? Um, who are the innovators and what are they actually doing? So we talked a little bit about your digital footprint and how that um, has been used to look at things like personality. Um, so it's interesting to think about what does your digital footprint actually say about you? Well, this is what it says about me. So if anyone has ever, uh, I don't know if anyone's done this, but if you go onto a site called Apply Magic Source, you are able to um, basically agree for them to look at your Facebook data 
and your tweets, and they will um, assess your, your big five as well as other things like how intelligent they think you are and how much they think you have a good uh, life satisfaction as well as things like your political affiliation. And this is the best of the best, isn't it? This yeah. is Cambridge University Psychology Department. And this is, of course, the one basically at the centre of the Cambridge Analytica scandal. So when I signed up to this, I agreed that they could use my data to predict my big five. What I didn't know is they were also predicting everyone who has a Facebook connection to me. Uh, and that was part of the scandal, is that um, by me agreeing, they took all my contacts as well. And this is how they got so much data, and it spiralled into the millions. So, here's some facts about me. Well, they've predicted that I am above average on intelligence. That's I think they got that right. Yay! Why, Julie, why are you above average intelligence? What, well, what's this black box telling us? Uh, one caveat is these, this was coming from my data on Facebook when I used to like when I was about, when I was about 20, so bear that in mind. Um, okay, so the likes that made me uh, more intelligent was actually because I like sleeping. Um, and also because I have an interest in psychology. So that really boosted my, my intelligence score. Um, my life satisfaction is, is, only, is only average. Uh, and if we look at the detail of what they used to drive that score, uh, it was actually because I'm a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so good. I don't know, maybe we're all a slightly risk reactor, yeah. self-indulgent, self-analyzing <laughs> psychologist who unfortunately aren't very satisfied with their life. <laughs> <laughs> so I do encourage you to go away and, and do your own and see, and see what it says about you. But what I was most intrigued to see is actually how they predicted my big five scores. Obviously, this is what we're particularly interested in. And I took slight satisfaction in the fact that they got me pretty much completely wrong. Um, so first score they got me on, was, well, was correct. So they've, they've predicted that I'm conservative and traditional, so that would be aligned to down to earth in the Lumina Spark model. Got me right on that one. Next one, they told me that I'm impulsive and spontaneous. So uh, those of you who do know me know that no. this is pretty no. much <laughs> not true. <laughs> I do like my routine and stability very high on down to earth. The next one is telling me that I am engaged in the outside world. It's telling me I'm extroverted. And again, no, <laughs> very much an introvert. So I uh, got that one pretty, pretty wrong. Next one is telling me I'm competitive. So it's really saying I'm more icon focused, whereas actually my splash is, tells me I'm more people focused. And I definitely would agree with that more. And this one, I'm glad to know they have told me that I'm laid back and relaxed. Um, but uh, I'm definitely more of a risk reactor than a reward director. So uh, obviously my social media presence would suggest otherwise. But uh, it's so not really one out of five. Truth. One out of five. So one out of five. I, I did a similar thing, and it came up and it said that I was really down to earth, really disciplined. And when I drilled into why, I was pleased it said that. Very pleased. Um, <laughs> it said one of the reasons was because I, I liked and posted things on the rock band Leonard Skinner. And when I explored it, it said people that like Leonard Skinner, a U.S. Southern rock band, they tend to be blue-collar workers that are hardworking, you know, and, and diligent. <laughs> and that seemed to boost my discipline. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think this is going to be particularly useful for predicting individuals. It can be useful in a big yeah. database for marketing analysis, but it's, it's unlikely that doing this is going to get to you as an individual uh, anywhere near as accurately as we, as we currently do. Yeah. yeah, but that hasn't stopped them making some pretty bold claims. Um, so if, when you actually look at the marketing behind this, what do they say? Um, well, they say that after 10 likes, they will know you better than a work colleague. 65 likes, know you better than a friend. 120 likes, if you're Facebook mad, uh, they'll know you better than a family member. And after 250 likes, they will know you better than your spouse. So you'll have higher, um, basically accurate predictions of your personality um, than if they gave a questionnaire to your spouse and said, okay, rate Stuart's mm. big five. So it's interesting to see that actually, well, when you look at the real data, when we try it ourselves, and we, it's good for so, you to go away and test your own, I'm not too impressed. Now, this, this basically is, is marketing hype. I have not seen any good evidence to support this at all, but it's good marketing hype. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
So a lot of companies have sort of um, rode this wave, though. Um, about, probably about last year, if you were to look at the big trends and um, where companies were investing their money, it was a lot about AI, a lot about big data, and trying to basically uh, use, use it to do some cool things, be a bit more innovative. So one company is Crystal Nose. Um, and they actually are looking at disk profiles. But what they're doing it is they're using um, you, how you actually write online. So your LinkedIn page, for example, they are analyzing the text, and then they're telling you what they think your disk profile is likely to be. And actually, it's, it's pretty accurate. We've played around with it quite a bit, um, particularly you have. Yeah, I got a message one day on LinkedIn saying, uh, you work with James Akers. Yeah, would you like to know about his personality? There's James over there. And I thought, yes. And it was behind the scene, it was crystal nose. So I said, yes, I would. And it, and it said a few things about James. Is this true? He's organized. I said, yes, he is. And they'd got that from your LinkedIn. Um, and then they said, have you got an email from James? I said, yeah, I got an email from James. I put it in the system. They analyzed it. And they said, he's diligent, he's thorough, da, 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 but he has good ideas. Oh, wow, that's really clever. Can you, can you agree or disagree? And I tick, tick, tick. And then I realized I'd just given James some 360. Um, without realising it through a cool system. He's helped their data. <laughs> and we sort of profiled him. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, how cool it is in the light of GDPR yeah. and data privacy, and is it a good thing for me to be cutting and pasting people's emails and analysing them without James's permission? Did you mind, James? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, although this is innovative and brilliant, there are ethical concerns, and that's why we're not, we're not in this um, space right now, but we're sort of monitoring it and thinking yeah. about it carefully because it's sort of interesting. Yep. Yeah, and if we look at other people like Hogan, for example, they had a big project called Hogan X, uh, and when you went onto the website, it had lots of really cool videos saying that they were going to be able to replace psychometric testing using traditional questionnaires, and they're going to be using cool things like um, yeah, how people write, and lots of crazy claims. However, um, the CEO who introduced that uh, project has now actually been replaced, so I'm not sure what the future of Hogan X will be. Mm -hmm. So, what other cool things are happening in the market? Well, we've got apps, yay! <laughs> <laughs> and I think Lumina is, is really a market leader in, in, in the apps and sort of industry, I guess. Um, but what are other people doing? Um, so, well, Hogan's got one. Oh, this one first is Good & Co. Um, so they market themselves as like an e-harmony for <laughs> psychometric data and what they, t what they want you to do is give your personality data and then they'll match you to companies and tell you how good a fit you are. Um, and they have all companies, like even Lumina Learning, we went on and investigated, me and James, um, I think we're a good fit. <laughs> um, but it, it does it based on the data of people who are current employees. Um, Hogan also has an app as well, so it's called uh, Pick2 HPI, and it, it's kind of an aid for people who are using, who are doing coaching with Hogan, where you can select different qualities as combinations, and it will tell you um, a bit about that combination. So imagine taking um, someone who's practical and imaginative, what does that mean? What else? Other big uh, thing, of course, is gamification and game-based assessment. So we're seeing a lot of this, particularly in recruitment. Um, so a lot of the big, big companies, like the KPMGs and PWCs, um, are working with uh, companies like Arctic Shores. Um, and what they're doing is uh, large-scale graduate recruitment. They want to engage the young people. Um, so they want to give them something a bit cool. Um, so they're, what they're doing is these funky games uh, on an app and what they're predicting, or they're saying they're predicting, is actually personality traits as well as other things such as persistence, risk-taking, and resilience. Um, and it's certainly very cool. It obviously gives a really great candidate experience. Um, but I don't know about the validity, Stu. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, from what we've seen, and we've been to a few talks and read a few papers, they've not got any strong validity yet, uh, meaning that if you play the game and try to predict these things, it won't be as accurate as other methods of yeah. doing it. Of course, it will come over time, but we don't think it's anywhere near there uh, yet. Although it's cool and people like it, particularly yeah. with, uh, with young grads and so on. Yeah. Yes. Well, they're interesting to know how some people, face validity is a bit poor, so people going, uh, applying for a job and then being told they're rejected based on how they play the game, you know, it can be a bit demotivating for people when they don't really know why. Okay. 
And um, there's lots of other companies actually who are um, going into this kind of uh, field of trying to predict personality traits by getting you to do games rather than taking in taking a traditional psychometric. So this one here, uh, Pi Metrics, I took 12 tests and it measures uh, cognitive ability and also my personality traits. And what they are, the application of this data is to tell you what kind of jobs they think you'll be best at. So what did it say about me? So it said my top three jobs would be marketing, customer service representative, and research analyst. So that's pretty, pretty good going. One out of three. One out of three. Uh, however, when I dig a bit deeper, product development, 35%. <laughs> or, yeah, 35%. So, so we uh, should move you into marketing and sales, Julia. Yeah, I'm instance. obviously in the wrong job. <laughs> Um, also, VR is also catching on as well in the psychometric space, particularly in recruitment. There's a company called CAP, um, and they've been using VR um, in assessment centers. Um, and I did see them present at uh, the Association for Business Psychology conference last year, and it was generating a lot of buzz. People were really excited about it. But actually, what they revealed was it's still, it's still pretty tricky. It's incredibly expensive. Um, and obviously, you can't have tons and tons of VR headsets. So that was one of the problems they were really um, encountering, is that it was really only the big companies who had a lot, of, a lot of money behind them who could really invest in this for a really cool candidate experience. But in terms of sort of rolling it out at large scale, I think that probably will be a challenge until they get the technology. So Julie, these are some, some cool things yeah. that competitors are doing. Yes. I'd really like you to share with everyone our, our new applicant tracking system. Let's okay. show them some more stuff. Could you give them a demo? Yes. Can we go straight to the demo? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ask them if they want to see the demo. Do you want to see the demo? Bang the table if you want the demo. <laughs> Thank you, Vibe Master. <laughs> oh, I might need your password. You know, I need my help. Okay, you need my password. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Closer than you think, actually. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. so one of the areas we've been um, innovating in is creating an applicant tracking system. We've actually been working on it for a few years. Uh, so people uh, can uh, apply for a job, upload their CV, and it's linked to spark uh, an emotion and we can analyze the data and support the recruitment process. So, um, Julie, do you want to dazzle us with this? Okay. This is coming soon, by the way. It's written and it's, it's, uh, it's very, 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 very close to us sharing this uh, with you. Okay, so here we are. We're in the applicant uh, tracking system. Um, these are all your potential projects. So these would be roles, for example, that you are hiring against. Um, you have the option to add a new one, but for now we're going to uh, take a deep dive into one. Here's one I made earlier, um, and, and see what it looks like inside. So, first things first, I'm in my dashboard, and here I can see that there's 14 new applicants. Um, I've also got one in interview. Um, we can also see the activity, for example, if I just look at how, what happened this month can see who's been filling in questionnaires and what are the trends of when people have been filling them in. But what I really want to get to is the merit list. And this is showing us everything we want to know about our candidates. So here is me. So I've got a few things that is of key interest. So here's my Lumina Select scores. So for those of you who have a use Lumina Select or might be more familiar with it, and what you'll be used to seeing is the PDF version. So if I just show you this. Here's our traditional PDF uh, version. So it's great, it's simple, it's one page, nice and neat, uh, good to bring into your interview, good for referencing, um, but it's static. And obviously we want to be going digital. We want to uh, make everyone's lives easier by being able to interact with the portrait in a more engaging way. So, what we've come up with is something called our Lumina Select Explainer. So the key features of the Lumina Select Explainer are something called a job profiler. And this is where you really set the context. So this is where you select the competencies. We've got the 16 Lumina Select competencies um, that are most important to, to the job. So let's just take a look at what we can do in the job profiler. 
So here we've got our 16 competencies. You've also got some nice templates that you might want to draw on to help you decide what competencies you want to focus on most. So if we look at legal, for example, these are the top competencies that have emerged through our data of, the, of uh, lawyers, who, uh, and these are the things that they come out strongest on. So if you're hiring for a, a legal profession, you might want to use this, or we can look at creatives. No surprise, they're probably gonna come out high on all the yellows um, and some of the greens. But of course, you can override this and add your own. And this would be where your conversations with your st stakeholders come in. So you, you will decide with your stakeholders what are the key competencies. So we're keeping it really flexible for you to do what you want. OK, so you've decided on the core competencies. What you want to do now is evaluate your candidate against them. So we're going to go into our portrait walkthrough. Note the left-hand stars here. These are uh, just reminding you that these were the ones you highlighted as being most important. So what's it showing us here? Well, it's showing us the key scores, so uh, what we're calling effective competency potential. So this is my personal portrait, and this is telling me what Julie is energized by. So you can see she's pretty energized by... Uh, gathering and analyzing information, that's good. <laughs> Pursuing and achieving goals, got two fives there. Uh, but not so energized by engaging and energizing. Um, yeah, probably obviously because I'm not a massive extrovert. Um, but I want to find out more about it. So if I click into the competency here, so adapting to change, it's telling me, first of all, what does that mean? I've got my definition coming up here. It's also telling me the qualities that drive that competency score. So you can see that I'm not so high on adaptable, but I'm pretty high on flexible. And this is sort of telling me why the score is, is a two. I also might want to find out a bit more about this competency and how Julie comes up in that competency. So if I click in, it will tell me more narrative about the quality scores I've actually received. So I'm low on takes charge, so how does that actually relate to the competency of adapting to change? And again, just taking any ambiguity out of it and really helping you understand the scores much, much more. So what's also cool about it is, of course, Lumina looks at the overextended qualities, and we really wanted to make better use of these in our recruitment offering. So you'll notice these little toggles at the top here. So as well as looking at what you might be good at and where you might have high competency potential, we're also interested in whether you might have some overextended qualities that block you. So if I flick to the blockers, you can see that our scale has changed and it's now measuring you on how much of a blocked potential you have. So you can see for me, Adapting to change have a pretty high blocked potential, and if we click on the qualities, you can probably see why. Uh, because I'm pretty high on rigid planning, narrow sighted, surely and not, change surely resistant. Not. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and here I am doing a talk on innovation. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, there, it's looking at basically what are the overextended qualities that might impede you or inhibit you to be able to display that competency effectively. There is also a third lens, and this is where we're looking at how you might overplay a competency. So overextended use. So here, we, let's see where I am potentially overextending. So I do like gathering, analyzing information, that's for sure. However, I am getting a five in terms of overextended use. And if we look at the explanation, it's focusing too much time and energy on smaller details, presenting information in an overly detailed manner, and being pedantic or overly fastidious. And again, <laughs> 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 trying to, uh, that's why I was like, I'll make my slides very visual, because I can always go down that rabbit hole of giving loads of content on slides. Um, and yeah, we can see why, because I've got high loss in the details, and I can be a bit serious and withdrawn at times. Those of you in the office probably know I spend a lot of time with my earphones on, <laughs> um, focusing. And again, this will tell you a bit more as to why, so I can focus too much time and energy on smaller details, and also um, I can be completely consumed by the task and, and withdraw myself in the process. So you can go through every competency and find out more about the individual ac across all their individual scores. Um, yeah, so it's quite cool, and you can toggle between them, which is a really nice way to, to interact with them. You can also highlight their splash as well, so if you want to just remind yourself 
how they're coming out on the eight aspects, you can do that. Um, and then lastly, what I want to show you is, okay, so you've decided what competencies are important. You've evaluated the candidate against them. The next thing that might be on your list, to-do list is to uh, do your interview. So the interview guide is a way to customize the interview questions to your needs. So again, we can see the competencies that have been highlighted, and it might be that you just want to select those um, and generate your interview guide with those competencies included. So if I just, oops, if I just click them, there's default interview questions that will be generated. So if you are, just want to quickly do it, you can uh, select your print button. Oh, there we go. And it should load our beautiful interview guide. And it will just contain the competencies that you have selected. And it will generate three default uh, interview questions. So here you can see uh, adapting to change. We've given you a summary of the scores that you will have seen in the digital walkthrough part. So your blocker score, effective score, and overextended use. And here are our nice default questions, as well as some notes and being able to rate uh, on a one to five score as well. However, you might have your own interview questions, or you might not be happy with the default ones that we have given you. So in that scenario, you can go to customize. We've given you some alternative options um, yeah, that you can choose from, or you can customize your own. So you have up to three options to customize. Ooh. Do you like this, guys? <laughs> Make some noise if you like it. <laughs> so, Julie, I'd, I'd like to say a few things by way of, uh, way of wrap up, because I'm sensing yeah. uh, Five Master and Maria hovering. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if you like this, it's, it's yeah. available in beta now. It's not formally released. You can contact Julie and sign up to use it immediately uh, in, this, in this beta phase. I've left my um, uh, business cards on the table. So if you are interested in uh, trial... Oh, I think I've gone the wrong way. Um, my email is going to come up Have on I lost screen. It? Where's your email? Keep going, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait for it, wait for it. Yeah. There it is. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so look at, we're looking for trialing partners. So if this is something you think you'd be interested in or want to use it with your clients, get in touch with us and um, we'll make sure you have the right training to be able to go away I've and got, use it. I've got two final things I want to say. So firstly, I want to acknowledge some of the people that have worked on this, which is Julie and uh, James Akers has worked on the uh, applicant tracking system and making this work. And also, David Brown, stand up, David Brown and James, stand up. Make some noise. Thank you, guys. Thank you, David. So I have a, a final, final question for you. Do you think the innovation Julie shared with you there, is that going to help us sort of double in size in the next few years? Yeah. Do you think you can take that out and use it, yeah? Do you think you can use it, make some noise? So thank you for your energy and attention and I'm going to hand back to a combination of Vibe Master and Murray. Okay. So Julie